Hello everybody, I'm Albert from RC Tritech, Luminova Switzerland. We're uh, situated in Teufen um, and we're the manufacturer of all the Swiss Super Luminova pigments which you find on your watch and which makes your watch visible in the dark. We're here in the core at the heart of our company in the furnace room where we burn our Swiss Super Luminova pigments. Swiss Super Luminova that's a ceramic material which is doped with rare earth ions. We're doing this since a few years now and um, to give you a little bit of further insight I would love to go step by step through the whole thing. It all starts with the raw materials which first have to be cleaned to avoid having uh, any impurities in the material and then the raw materials are mixed in powder form as you can see here already in the crucible so the entire material is not luminous at all at, at all as you can see here nothing is glowing but if we put the entire thing into our furnace under a special atmosphere with quite a lot of heat you can see on the indication here in the back we're talking about one and a half thousand degrees the material transforms itself into another crystal structure. If we take out the furnace after the heating process, the whole thing has changed the color, has shrinked a little bit, and it's hard as hell. You see, it's a little bit more yellowish. And if I now take a UV lamp and charge the whole thing, it will be glowing in the dark. So that's actually the Superluminova in block form. Now we have to transfer this block of solids with Superluminova into a powder form. We have specialized machines for that, which I'm unfortunately not allowed to show you, but to give you a little bit uh, an idea how we do it, let me show it to you in a symbolical way. We first start with the block, transfer the block into a kind of mortar like this. And we start milling the whole thing down until we get to an even finer pound like that, which is afterwards sieved, once again milled, once again sieved, and so on, until we are at the correct grain size. So we want to reduce the grain size to a size where it's perfectly consistent, where it's repeatable in every uh, process, so um, that our partners never have any problems in their production processes. I'm Bernhard Waldmann, working here at RC Tritech or Luminova AG um, in the part of or in the department of the development. Um, I'm here responsible for development projects with universities or internal developments. I'm responsible for doing quality control of the afterglow pigments. I have an overview of all of the production of the afterglow pigment. I was the one who built up the production with the father of Albert Zeller. Um, together uh, we, we built up the whole production of the Afterglow pigment and it was a lot of fun within the last 15 years I'm now here in the company. Just to clarify why we are doing quality control here is um, we have more than 25 different type of pigments. So we have different Afterglow colors, we have different qualities like standard, A grade, grade X1 and we have different grain sizes and so on. So at the end we have 25 different kind of pigments. And here in the quality control, we have to check whether we always meet the uh, specifications we have defined for each type of this pigment. And so that's we, we have to measure the grain size, we have to measure the afterglow intensity, we have to measure the emission color of the pigment, and that's mainly what we're doing here. Now we do the first part of quality control. Um, you have seen um, the production of our afterglow pigment. We got grinding, we got sieving, and now we have this um, fine particles. 
but we need to know how big are our particles at the end. So did we sieve it in, in the right way? And this we do here with our instrument, with this um, laser diffraction particle size analyzer. What we do is we put some part of the powder in this instrument here at the top. We place it in here and then it goes within a, a liquid, it's isopropanol. It is floating around in a circle and within the circle we have here a laser and this laser goes through the sample and will be diffracted dependent on how big the grains are. So the smaller the grains, the stronger the laser will be diffracted. And here we have a lot of detectors measuring the intensity of the laser beam. And so we can directly read out the grain sizes of our particles. So now we have prepared everything and I will put some powder in. We can place it up here. Right. That's it. We have to wait shortly and then we can start the measurement. Okay. Now we are at the second part of our quality control. Here we measure now the brightness or the light intensity coming from our powder. What we do is we place a sample in here. You see here I filled some powder into the sample holder and I can place it in here. I already switched on a UV lamp which illuminate our sample for a defined time, like here for 20 minutes. And after 20 minutes, we switch off the light and then we can measure the afterglow coming from our sample. And we measure it here with this camera system. The camera system is measuring an area here from our powder sample and give us directly the afterglow of the sample. So as already mentioned, we have different qualities of our afterglow pigment. So we have a standard grade, we have an A grade, and we have a grade X1. And each of these pigment glow with a different intensity. So grade X1 is the best one we have, and it has to reach um, a definite value of afterglow. And only if we have this afterglow intensity, we can declare it as a grade X1. If it has less intensity, we have to clarify it as grade A or more or less than it's a standard sample. Okay, here we are at the third part of our quality control. Here we measure the afterglow color of our pigment. What, he, what we use is, is a fluorescent spectrometer. And what we do is we excite our pigment, come light coming from this side, and then we measure the afterglow color on here, on this side. So now we have finished producing the superluminova and also the quality control was done. And as you can imagine, now some customers have the wish that the superluminova is colored into a way where they need it applied on their hands, dials or other uh, watch components. What we get is a reference, can be a Pantone color, can be just a piece of cotton for example and then we start coloring our Swiss Superluminova pigments according to the reference. This is done in this laboratory and uh, I would like to show this at an example where Andrea, my colleague, is showing you how to do it. What we are doing here is that we kind of pr produce the recipe for the final production. Andrea is approaching step by step to the color where we want to get. The last uh, trial was a little bit too dark, so this time she's going to need some less colored ingredients to get to the correct color. A development like that can take several steps. Usually it would be, we would be very, very lucky to get there in one step. The material itself is prepared, as you can see, in the milligram scale. Since also only a very, very small amount of pigment is used for the series production. With one gram of Swiss Superluminova, you can produce in between 100 to 500 dials.
So in this example, we have received a hand, as you can see there, as a color reference. And our customer wants to have the same color developed for the application onto the dial. Since our customer is using this green base coat, we also have to develop the Superluminova in the exactly same color. This is what uh, has been done now. And afterwards, the Superluminova in the exact binder system of, uh, of the luminizing company used is applied onto a very comparable geometry to really ensure that the color will always match to the other component. Now I make a mixture from the binder and Swiss Superluminova. If you buy Superluminova or binder, it's separated, it's not a mixture. If you buy it, then at first you put in the Swiss Superluminova and after the binder. You have for every application separated binder system and the mixture is from application to application a difference. You see now, first I put in the super, Swiss Superluminova, and after you put in. Now you mix the two components, Superluminova with the binder and close them. A mixture with a binder. You fill the screen or transfer to the dial. Now you see the depot for the Superluminova and here is the needle. You have different thickness for the base coat or for Superluminova. Now we have the mixture. Fill it into the stilo. You work with air, with pressure, 